Today we're going to discuss a somewhat unusual object discovered not so long ago, and an object with a somewhat unusual name. This here is currently referred to as Dracula's Chivito. A kind of a funny name, mostly because the founder grew up in a region extremely close to Transylvania, and Chivito is a type of a sandwich from the co-author's home country of Uruguay. But despite a somewhat unusual name, this object is actually super exciting. And as you can see from these images, kind of unusual. But if you watch like every single video on this channel, you probably already know what this is and you probably are familiar with the second such object, the original one that you see right here referred to as Gomez's hamburger. In this case called a hamburger because of its unusual shape and Gomez was the name of a staff technician who accidentally discovered this back in 1985 in the country of Chile. And so because of the unusual name of this particular object, the second object was also named after some kind of a sandwich. And so how wonderful person, this is Anton, today we're going to discuss these unusual objects once again, but really focus on this. Because the recent study just confirmed that this is something not a lot of scientists expected, and it's basically a new record holder. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but first a really important side note. A lot of these objects were actually discovered a relatively long time ago. For example, the picture of this initially appeared back in 2016. And this was initially seen by the US Naval Observatory, but because nobody knew exactly what this was, it essentially remained as a kind of a side note and described as a nebula. But nebula without any specific characterization. It basically just had the name. IRS 23077 plus 6707. And so it basically took approximately 8 years for someone to rediscover this and to then figure out what exactly we're looking at. Or I guess more importantly, link it to this. And we kind of already knew what this was. Gomez's hamburger is basically a young star. It's a protoplanetary disk seen from sideways, roughly around 6500 light years away. And though initially it was actually believed to be some kind of a nebula, specifically a planetary nebula or a result of a sun-like star turning into a white dwarf, additional observations revealed that this was not the case. It was revealed to be a protoplanetary disk approximately 900 light years away from us, with this unusual dark band basically being the disk itself, with the star in the middle also being relatively hot, roughly around 10,000 Kelvin. And these unusual white bonds, that's basically light reflected from all of the gas around the disk produced by the super hot star. And all of this became quite apparent once the researchers analyzed the chemical composition. Here they basically saw a lot of different gas including carbon monoxide, which very often correlates with forming planets. And actually carbon monoxide moving in two different directions, which basically corresponds to a disk and to newly forming planets with one of the planets potentially even being Jupiter-like because there seems to be some kind of a clump of carbon monoxide gas. And so when the researchers saw this, here it was very easy to make the connection. Once again, two bonds, an unusual dark band in the middle. So extremely likely something very similar, or basically a disk almost side on. Here the distance was very similar, approximately 1000 light years, and the star was also very very hot, possibly 8000 Kelvin. We usually refer to these as A-type stars. But it's a lot of additional observations that basically made everyone go, okay, that is kind of cool. Turns out that there is a lot of stuff here. As a matter of fact, it turns out that this is very likely the largest protoplanetary disk we have ever seen anywhere. Because the size here was estimated to be approximately 1650 astronomical units. That's up to 100 times bigger than anything we've seen before in a lot of other star systems, with the total mass of the disk being approximately 0.2 solar masses. And so these two recent papers that you can find in the description essentially go through the initial analysis and then through additional confirmations using different types of telescopes and different types of light. And specifically, because this is a dust disk, the dust hides a lot of stuff. And so by using microwave telescopes, such as the submillimeter array located in Hawaii, scientists behind this recent study were able to see through this in order to identify specific features. And so using millimeter wavelengths, they definitely confirmed that this is a spinning object resembling a disk sideways, with different types of gases seen moving at different velocities. And basically in a disk-like fashion, one side moving away from us, one side moving toward us. And it was also seen to be extremely rich in dust and various types of gas. 
With all of this gas being visible as very bright patches in millimeter wavelengths visible with radio telescopes. With the star itself being possibly 2 to 4 solar masses, but basically entirely hidden by all of this dust. We can actually barely even see it, only visible as these reflection buns formed by the dust around the disk. But it's really the amount of gas here that's really shocking. It seems to have enough material to form many many different gas giants similar to Jupiter, but also at distances up to 300 times as far as Jupiter, basically up to 1600 astronomical units. So in a nutshell, at least in theory, if these planets form, this particular star system could be extremely overpopulated with a lot of different planets. Something that we've actually never seen before and something that would be very surprising. As of today, astronomers have never found any star systems with more than a handful of Jupiter-like planets. And so the evolution of the system is currently super intriguing. Nobody actually knows what this is going to become in the foreseeable future, or I guess in the next few millions of years, but if it becomes a star system with multiple gas giants, that would be super surprising. For I guess at least one possible reason. These types of systems would not be very stable, with a lot of these gas giants very likely kicking each other out or possibly combining. And so maybe one potential resolution here is that this is how rogue planets form, and this is why we actually find so many different rogue planets across the entire galaxy. One of the most recent discoveries from the Euclid telescope was a surprising discovery of thousands of rogue planets in just a tiny patch of the night skies. But maybe on the other hand, this is also how brown dwarfs form as well. Maybe all of this dust eventually combines through various collisions, forming larger and larger objects such as mysterious brown dwarfs. Or basically objects that are just a fraction of a star's mass, or are almost star-like, but don't actually get enough mass to become stars. Either way though, at the moment this is definitely the largest such object we've ever seen, more than 10 times bigger than any other candidate, and possibly up to 100 times bigger than what the solar system was back in the days, 4.5 billion years ago. And so by itself this evidence is kind of shocking, but also super exciting. Mostly because now the scientists believe that it's quite likely that a lot of these objects have actually been discovered by previous surveys, but possibly missed completely just because nobody actually thought what we're looking at and some scientists made an assumption that this was just some kind of a nebula, such as a planetary nebula, formed by various ancient stars. But in reality these seem to be extremely young stars about to form their own star systems. And though right now we've only discovered two, it's quite likely many of these were missed by various surveys in the past. And it's quite likely we're going to be discovering more in the next few years. Mostly because now the scientists know what to look for and they can probably use a machine learning algorithm to automatically identify all of these objects in a lot of older data. But I guess at least for now that's kind of all we have. You can actually learn a little bit more about these objects in the older video that you can find in the description. But once we have more updates or once something else is discovered about these objects, and specifically about this one, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, this is definitely super exciting, it's probably going to lead to a lot of exciting studies and possibly even a lot of exciting answers, but at least for now because this is just a recent discovery, that's all we know. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.